I want to congratulate the finance minister on her flip-flop today. She had said that deflation was a bigger risk to Canada than inflation. Now that Canada has the second highest inflation rate in the G7, higher than the Eurozone and higher than most of our competitors, and the second most housing inflation of any country on earth, she has admitted that we have, quote, an inflation crisis. Congratulations for finally waking up to that. Will she acknowledge that this inflation is in fact a homegrown problem? Mr. Speaker, I know that Canadians understand that inflation is a global phenomenon, and here are some numbers to back that up. Inflation in Canada in October was 4.7 percent. In the United States, it was 6.2 percent. In Mexico, 6.2 percent. In New Zealand, 4.9 percent. The G20 average is 4.6, and the OECD average is 4.6. This is a serious global challenge, not a made in Canada problem. Well, member for Carleton. Let's just see about that. You know, land doesn't have a global supply chain. It was supplied by geological factors many millions of years ago. And yet, how land prices in Canada have gone up by 20% in one year, giving Canada the second highest real estate inflation on planet Earth, ahead of every other nation on Earth except for New Zealand. A phenomenon that really kicked off after this finance minister began flooding markets with cheap cash and ballooning prices. Isn't that a homegrown problem? The Conservatives may not want to listen to me about inflation, but I suspect they read the National Post. So let me quote what a Post columnist had to say this week. Inflation is a global phenomenon. It is being influenced by external factors like supply kinks and global bond yields. The National Post was likewise unimpressed by the antics of the member for Carleton, describing him as charging out of his corner arms windmilling. I suspect that will be the judgment of most Canadians, including the Conservative readers of the National Post.